Okay, so this is the Osprey 95 liter duffel that I am taking with me to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, this is uh, packed to the brim, uh, but I did weigh it with the travel scale and it is 30 pounds. I think that's about 13 kilograms. And they're very strict in Tanzania with the weight. Uh, the porters will only carry 15, or not only, will carry 15 kilograms for us, uh, which equates to, I think, 33 pounds in uh, imperial units. So let's see. So in here I have uh, all my stuff. So this stuff I just threw in at the last minute, but... I have, let's see, my down jacket. I have some uh, fleece. I have my balaclava, uh, lightweight beanie, fleece beanie, and some arm warmers in there. And uh, Tanzania has recently issued a ban on single-use plastic, so I'm not sure that I'm allowed to take this, but um, if I have to ditch the plastic, that's fine. Uh, I think that stuff will be okay. I have medical supplies, the Diamox, antibiotics, anti-malaria, anti-everything. <laughs> Um, no getting sick stuff. Uh, plus some wipes, some Neosporin, some KT tape, uh, band-aids, um, all the essentials. And I have some snacks. Uh, the porters will carry this, but I'm also going to carry a bunch of snacks in my day pack. I have toothbrush face wipes, floss, and some more essential stuff. And uh, this is an interesting thing. So I uh, found this on Amazon. It's called a Shiwi. And it is a device or uh, something that helps you uh, go to the bathroom in your tent. I know that sounds gross. Um, so you don't have to go outside the tent in sub-zero temperatures at night. I think that'll come in handy. Uh, a laundry bag for dirty stuff. I have my clothes. So initially I had um, packed these according to type of clothing. So for instance, I labeled this hiking pants. Um, I labeled that long sleeve shirts and lightweight base layers. Um, but then this weekend I went through the bag again and I unpacked everything and reorganized it to try and lighten it a little bit, bring the weight down, and also to make it more efficient and uh, take some of the, the whole thought process out of it um, and make it easier for me while I'm on the mountain so I don't have to think about what layers I'm going to wear today and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I relabeled these. Um, I put two different outfits in here for days one and days two. And I put two more outfits in this one for days three and four in the uh, compression packs. And I think I'll just switch them out days one and two, days three and four, and then I'll go back to day... Days one and two will become days five and six, and days three and four will become the outfits for days uh, seven and eight. And underwear, rain pants, and some other like the, the thick like fleece layer and merino wool base layers. Then socks, super important. I have seven pairs of socks, even though they suggest you bring like four to five pairs, but I figured some of them are sock liners and I figured it couldn't hurt to have an extra pair of socks or two just in case they get wet. Um, they don't dry uh, on time for the next, the next part of the climb. 
Um, so that's, that's that. Sports bras. A pair of lightweight hikers. These are actually trail running shoes. These are my ultra trail running shoes. I think these are the Lone Peak 3s or 3.5 if I'm not mistaken. These are really good. I've used them a lot. I've trail run with them over the summer and they're super comfortable. I'm bringing my own sleeping mat. Um, this is a Thermarest um, Neo Xair uh, Extreme or something like that, but it's basically um, has an R rating of 5.7, which is one of the higher R ratings, which is um, necessary. Uh, the higher the R rating, the more the warmer it keeps you. So I'm bringing that, but I tested it and it actually takes quite a while to inflate. It took me about 20 breaths. So uh, I don't know how, how that's going to work up on the mountain in high altitude and low oxygen. It's going to be hard enough to breathe. Um, I might run out tomorrow and get one of those um, compression socks that blow air into it. So I don't have to use my lung power. I'm bringing this. This is my Thermarest pillow. I did actually buy a smaller, more compact, inflatable Sea to Summit pillow, which is about the size of my fist. Compared to this, that's quite small and quite light. But this is actually very light. Um, it takes up a little bit more room in my pack than I would have wanted, but it's super, super comfortable. And I tried sleeping on the Sea to Summit inflatable uh, pillow the other night and I, I could not sleep on it for the life of me. It was, it's so uncomfortable. It's just like sleeping on a rock. Um, so I'm bringing this with me. Let's see. I have my sleeping bag, which is a climate sleeping bag. It's, uh, rated for zero degrees and it's a four season sleeping bag. Um, it's quite light. It only weighs 3.7 pounds, so it's not bad. I could have rented a sleeping bag from uh, the tour company, Can Do Adventures, but um, their, their sleeping bag weighs like, oh, I think about six pounds. So that was a bit too heavy. Um, and also I figured uh, with this, you know, I'll have it for future use. Um, but uh, it's rated for zero degrees and I've read that on summit night on Kilimanjaro, it could get down to, you know, minus 10, minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, I bought this, uh, Thermalite reactor compact plus, uh, sleeping bag liner, which, uh, is supposed to add up to 20 degrees of warmth, uh, while you're in the sleeping bag. Um, so hopefully this lives up to that and I will be nice and toasty on summit night. And then I bought some extra nylon um, cinch sacks just to throw like additional dirty clothes or, you know, snack wrappers or whatever else in there. Um, and I have my GoPro accessories. I love this. This is the chest strap. I can't wait to use that. That's going to come in handy. Um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be much more comfortable than uh, wearing the GoPro on my head. And I think it'll be great because I can actually, you know, look down at the GoPro screen and see what's in the viewfinder. Um, so that's going to be nice. And I bought a protective housing for the GoPro because clumsy me is likely to drop it and I don't want it to shatter like I shattered my brand new iPhone 11 Pro when I was hiking four days before my trip. So luckily I went and got that. Luckily it survived, first of all. It fell off of a hundred foot cliff up at Harriman State Park and it just cracked the screen a bit and it was completely functional. I was very shocked. Um, so I had that replaced so it's in good working order and extra battery and battery charger and tempered glass screen and lens protectors which i probably won't need if i use the uh the thicker um, protective casing 
Um, but I'm bringing it anyway. We'll see. And the carry-all. So that's it for what's in the duffel bag. Oh, one more thing. So this duffel bag is awesome because it actually has a zipper compartment on the top lid here, which um, I'm not going to open right now. Oh, actually, yeah, I can open it with one hand. And I stuffed a bunch of little hand warmers and things like that in here. Um, and I think I'm going to put my um, little bag that has some more um, cords and, you know, earplugs and things like that that I'll need for the trip. Um, so that's that. It's, it's pretty pretty lightweight for a 95 liter. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how it handles um, at the airport and in my travels. So stay tuned for part two and I'm going to show you guys everything that I have in my day pack, which is quite heavy. So I'm, you know, a little, little trepidatious about that, um, but that'll be in the next video. So stick around um, and thank you for watching. Kilimanjaro, here we come.